Oh! This thing's gotta be 200 pounds. Hey everybody, I appreciate you guys watching this video, but before we get into it, I wanna let you know at the very end of this video, I'm gonna give a full breakdown on all of my tackle, how I went about fishing for tarpon over the years, what I finally was able to do to get tarpon, and just give you some details on my trip. And look, this is my very first time landing a tarpon, catching one, being hooked up this long, and it is just an insane way, just a very unorthodox way of getting one of these guys. And so, hey, you gotta start somewhere. I'm sure I'm gonna hear it in the comments below, but look, man, I'm excited for it. It's gonna be a great time. I appreciate you watching this video. Oh. Whew. Oh. Woo! Let's go! Uh. Come on, here we go. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm on a big tar bed. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh man, I jumped a big one. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's digging deep right now. This thing's digging deep, boy! Woo! Keep it going slow and steady. Tarping, oh, this is the longest we've had one on. Huh? This is the longest we've had one on. No, this is a different one. I know, I'm saying, is this the longest you've ever had one on? Oh, yeah, I'm actually. This thing's pulling me around like a sleigh ride. <laughs> All around the bay. Come on! Oh, Woohoo! Oh, yeah! Oh my goodness, come on. Come on. Oh, that's huge. Oh my goodness. Woo! Good job, babe. Let's go. This thing is massive. Oh my Woo! god. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Like two hundred pounds. Ooh, come on. Woo! Oh, babe, can you hang up the phone? Wait, what? Can you hang up the phone? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a beast! Oh, look at that fish. That's insane. Let's go. Whew. Let's go. That's a land right there. That is a land. Oh, what a beast. It's a big one. I grabbed the leader a few times, but I can't get it landed. It's just. Come on, bro. Oh.
I just don't know where in the mouth to grab him. On the right lip. Yeah, the boat looks naked, bro. Yeah. Hey. I really want to land it on the kayak for the sake of like having done that. That's um, it's on the, oh, he keeps digging. Here's what I don't know. Every time I let him up for air, does that mean he's like stronger? Yeah, when he gets a breath. It does? So I should stop trying to let him get air? If you can, when they, uh, when they come up, when they come up to go, if you pull down in the opposite direction, it'll kind of stop him. Okay. I don't know, it might just pull you in the guy ass. Adam's gonna be jealous. Bro, he's at work right now. Come on. How long you been fighting? 22 minutes, duh. 23 minutes. I'm about to take him over to this bar over here though. So that's the thing. Can I just grab in their mouth? Yeah. yeah you you want to grab like their bottom jaw. So go in this way? Yeah. Not this way? I mean, either yeah, way. Either, either way, like, I like it with my thumb up. Okay. Get a better grip, yeah, with your fingers in, thumb on the bottom. All right. It's like this. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Nah, it's like fully loaded. But we're getting we're getting shallow now. Oh, I don't have gloves. Oh. What's that? We can land you can land it and then we can get you up on the bar with the kayak. How far is the bar? Right, I mean you can I can tow you wherever. I'm gonna lead him right there then. We're close to it, right? Yeah, yeah. Just to your left. That's what the alright. Come on, buddy. We're about to get wet today. Come on, buddy. I'm just gonna grab this guy as soon as he gets, as soon as I get this leader. <laughs> yeah, I think I gotta get out of the kayak, man. I gotta get to that bar. Gotta get this out. Oh, geez. Here, I'll hop in. Oh, man. Now it's un <laughs> now it's under the kayak. Hey, I'll get your kayak. Don't worry about it. Hey, you see that cut bait right there? There we go. Well, this reel needs to be uh, serviced, dude. I can't find shallow water. I thought I was in shallow water. Floating? Yeah. All right. No, like no, like we can't walk. Yeah, I know. You got the motor off? It's under your boat all the way. Okay. Yeah. Just keep the this is crazy. Grab the, grab out of the boat. I got it, Rob. Let go, let go. Hold it, Rob. Down. <laughs> oh, I lost my favorite pair of pliers. Oh, I think we'll get them. 
Now I'm on a boat. How'd that happen? <laughs> this is the most insane. This defeats the purpose. We'll put you. We'll put you back on your on your kayak rover. I lost like my. I mean, you already had it. You already had landed, so. I lost like my three hundred dollar pair of pliers. Get a Man, I lost my favorite pliers. Oh well. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it for this story. What should I do? Nothing. Let go? Put it out. You're you your drag? Alright. your drag. Oh, hooks out. Hooks out. Hooks out. Hooks out. But I'm in his gill and wrapped around his jawbone. Okay. Um. Just... <laughs> Hold on. That was coming. Uh. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Alright. Ready? Oh. 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 O
and this is the exact setup I used. And I basically just tweaked a few things so I can use it for tarpon. Okay, the actual reel I'm using, I've had this reel for almost 10 years. This is the Penn Spin Fisher, uh, and this is gonna be a 6500. Um, when I go shark fishing for my kayak, I pretty much use a 6500 on all my bigger setups here. Um, I just love it. I know it's a little bit overkill. You could definitely size way down if you're going to uh, target tarpon. That is for sure. But this is my setup that I caught a 200 plus pound tarpon with. And the way you're able to measure tarpon, by the way, is like what we were doing. We got some leader. We went from the fork of the tail to the top lip of the mouth. That's what we did. And then we did the girth. And then there's systems out there, calculators, where you can um, measure how big your tarpon is going to be uh, once you get those measurements. Okay, so let's move into leader. So I have been using this same pack of leader for like two years. This is just like cheap Bass Pro. It's called Extreme Leader Material. This is 80 pound test and it's a hundred yards of it. I don't remember what I paid. Maybe I paid like 20 bucks for this bag, but I'm only using 85 pound test leader on there. Um, again, you can actually size down, especially if you're on the beach and you're targeting tarpon that are 120 pounds, 140 pounds, 150 pounds, something like that, you'll do fine. This is 65 pound um, Power Pro on there. Again, I'm a super simple person and I don't use anything very, very fancy. So this is just 65 uh, pound braid Power Pro. Now, once we get into you know weights and hooks and things like that, I do have, oh, let's get into the length. So the length of my leader is probably, it's not perfectly measured every single time, uh, but it's probably about eight feet, nine feet. Yeah, something like that, maybe eight or nine feet. When we get into weights, I have various different sizes of these little weights right here, but my buddy, um, Adam Whitbeck, uh, turned me on to these right here and they kind of have this rubber sleeve and they can just slide on to an existing leader already tied on. So you don't have to undo what you're doing. You can just slide these on if you're bottom fishing for tarpon. And then I am just using these Mustad Demon Perfect Circle uh, number eight size hooks right here. And they just look like that. And so I was using number nines um, and then I ran out. So the only thing I had left, because I hooked up with two other tarpon that day. No, I hooked up with two sharks, landed them, jumped one tarpon and then got this tarpon, but I lost one of uh, most of my hooks to the shark. So I was using number nines, but now I think because I landed that big tarpon, I'm gonna use number eights. So that's where we're at. That is pretty much my gear. If I missed anything, let me know. So let's talk about how I went about catching this tarpon here. So, okay, I've been chasing these for a long time. I've heard all different types of bait, past crabs, um, there's secret baits that I won't tell you about. You gotta, you gotta put in the work to earn those. Um, mullet, I've heard that. Uh, I've seen people catch them on flies and lures. I've seen people catch them on pinfish. I've seen people catch them on all different types of things. I've tried pretty much everything. For me, what I did and what helped me out when I started getting more tarpon to grab my bait and actually jump them, and I lost a lot of tarpon this season and last season to jumping tarpon and spinning the hook, but I've been cast netting for fresh mullet and I will freeze them, you know, just because I can't always get my hand on mullet and mullet are like five to six dollars each if you go to the bait store. So I just pretty much hop on my scooter and just drive around with the cast net in a bucket and just go around to canals and things like that and just cast net for mullet. So I'm using mullet about this big. I don't like them. I well. I'm acting like I do this. I don't do this, but just go with me. So I don't like the really big ones. I don't know. To me, it's just, I feel like it's a little too big. So I like the ones that are like this. So I've been targeting the mullet about, you know, nine to 12 inches, something like that. I cut off the head, I cut off the tail, and I've been soaking those. And the reason why I feel a little bit confident and like acting like I, I know what I'm talking about is just because ever since I started doing that, and soaking on the bottom in specific types of areas, um, I've been getting a lot more hookups with tarpon and jumping more tarpon, okay? So that is what I used on this particular trip. And you can see that cut up bait on the deck of my boat if you were looking. Now I wanna talk about um, spots. So I'm in Tampa Bay, Florida. And first of all, don't roast me for making a video and catching a tarpon. Look, there are people who do way worse things than what I just put out on the internet. I also wanna say this, just to defend myself a little bit against the keyboard warriors. Um, 
the top guys, like I, I know them, okay? The top guys in our area are on social media, like putting up some pretty heavy landmarks when they're out there on the water, when they're tarpon fishing, and they're like literally tagging locations. And my thinking is like, okay, if the people who do this for a living are filming and showing some of our biggest landmarks in Tampa Bay, then just catching a tarpon and making my first tarpon experience video uh, can't be the biggest crime in the world. So that is just gonna be my defense uh, for people who want to attack me for putting out videos. Look, I don't like to spot burn. I don't spot burn. Um, I don't go out and just burn everything I do. Um, but I just wanna say there are people out there who are uh, actually, who do this for a living, who are actually putting up major landmarks of where they are doing this. So don't roast me too bad. Feel free to roast me. I'll take all the smoke. I just want to defend myself a little bit. There are a bunch of different methods when it comes to hooking up with tarpon and uh, catching them and landing them and uh, how you decide to use artificial, how, if you decide to use cut bait, live bait, if you want to free line, if you want to soak at the bottom. I'll tell you this, I've been doing a lot of free lining. I've hooked up, lost them of course. I've been doing a lot of soaking at the bottom and I've lost them of course. And even though you might be at a particular spot, like if you see a guide out there and they're showing off, oh, I'm at this spot and this is where we're at. And there's like a million boats at Bean Point and it's just going crazy. You still have to kind of put in the work to know how to catch these fish. It's not really like based on luck. These guys have a lot of skill and I've been chasing tarpon for four years, hooking up and failing year after year. And this year I've had my most success, of course, but just more hookups. And so it takes time to learn what the tarpon are doing. If they're all rolling at the top, what does that even mean? If you don't see them, uh, what does that mean? But they're supposed to be there. If it was a full moon, where'd they all go? What's going on? How come they're not wanting this bait? How come they're not wanting that bait? And it just takes a lot of time of putting all of that information together. But for me in particular, I haven't had a, luck, a lot of luck um, just using uh, soft plastics and um, just like the big soft plastics and stuff like that. Not a lot of luck for me. I have been doing a lot of dead bait because it's easier for me. I don't have a boat to where I can just go and just collect all these pass crabs and stuff. And so the mullet was the key. And when you're fishing with what I was fishing with, uh, the bait I'm fishing with, you can either free line or you can do a bobber and get it kind of in the middle of the water column, or you can soak it on the bottom. I've done all three and I've hooked up with tarpon on all three, but of course, it, it, once you hook up, you still have to learn how to bow the rod and to do all this stuff. It's just such a thing. And you're reeling in your other baits and then you miss the fish because it's just a lot going on, especially when you're a one man show on a kayak. And so a lot of misses come with that. But for me, I have had most of my hookups either free lining in the proper spot. You still have to understand the spot you're fishing and how the current works and where the fish might be. So you might notice a guide is like, oh, this, this is the best spot. Or you might see a bunch of boats stacked up, but you still have to understand how to fish that spot. Um, on this particular fish, I was soaking both of my rods on the bottom using a weight. I did have a hookup free lining earlier in the day, but then I went ahead and doubled down because I didn't really see him in the middle. I didn't really see him on top. And I just started soaking at the bottom and ended up catching this one. So guys, hey, if you have any questions, man, this is what Yak Tribe is all about. I'm here to answer questions. I'm excited for you guys who might be interested in uh, tarting this fish on your own. And we've got a few weeks left here in Tampa Bay, Florida. And of course, you know, they're gonna migrate. And so we went ahead and wore out the fish for you guys before they went up to the panhandle. They're actually already kind of going up there already. And um, it's just been a great time. So cheers to you if you're watching this and trying to figure out how to do it on your own in a kayak. Just know it can be dangerous. Just know they have a ton of power. And I learned that firsthand on this trip. I have a lot more respect and this is going to sound kind of crazy, but I'm going to try and target smaller tarpon next because I want to be able to actually handle this fish and not just have such a chaotic 
thing when I'm by myself. I fish a lot by myself. So that's pretty much it for this video, man. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for supporting Yak Tribe and being part of the tribe. If you're not part of Yak Tribe, make sure to go to yak-tribe.com. Grab yourself a hat, grab yourself a shirt, a decal, all that's being updated uh, soon anyway. And I appreciate you guys for doing what you do and for supporting me and my family and watching this video. Make sure that you guys are nice down in the comments and if there's anything that I can uh, do to help you out for the, your journey, for whatever you're fishing with. I don't know everything, but if I can help with something, leave it down below and I'll do my best to help. I'll catch you guys on the next video.